Hello again human beings from the planet Earth. What you see in front of you, obviously, Reader's Digest. I'm going to recommend everybody go find this online or uh, maybe go pick up the copy July and August of this year. This was just handed to me by somebody who knows uh, my disgust for nuclear power. And I want to bring this to your attention, especially those of you in Colorado. Rocky Flats. Uh, I didn't know about this. You probably didn't know about this. I'm not going to read the story to you. Um, I read it, or at least half of it, until I became thoroughly disgusted. But uh, this is an excerpt from My Nuclear Neighborhood uh, by the author Kristen Iverson, who I don't know, and this isn't a promotion from her for her, although I thought the writing was uh, quite good. But I want to show you the timeline, uh, which I will read to you here. Rocky Flats timeline, 1952, the plan opens only 16 miles from Denver uh, and 8 from Boulder. 1957, a major fire spreads radioactive contamination, but residents aren't told about the extent of it until 1970. 1969, a second fire is the costliest industrial accident in the U.S. at the time. 1970, after independent scientists find plutonium off-site, the Atomic Energy Commission admits to the contamination. 1975, Rockwell International replaces Dow Chemical as managing contractor. 1978, large-scale public protests begin and continue for years. 1989, based on reports of extensive contamination, the FBI raids Rocky Flats. Uh, sorry, production of plutonium uh, triggers end. A federal grand jury is impaled and lengthy investigation begins. 1990, E.G. and G. assumes management of Rocky Flats. A class action lawsuit is filed on behalf of nearly 13,000 residents alleging that Dow and Rockwell allowed plutonium to contaminate their land. 1992, despite request of of grand jury for indictments, the government prosecutors negotiate a settlement. Rockwell pleads guilty to 10 violations of the Clean Water Act and federal hazardous waste laws and pays a fine of 18.5 million. Outraged grand jurors write their own report detailing ongoing contamination. The report is permanently sealed. 1985. In the ongoing class action suit, Cook v. Rockwell International, a U.S. District Judge holds the DOE in contempt of court for failure to release millions of pages of documentation regarding missing plutonium, health issues, and more. Heavily redacted documents are eventually produced. 2000. Legislation is passed to help compensate ill workers exposed to radiation, but missing records make it hard to prove. 2001, Kaiser Hill LLC agrees to partially clean up Rocky Flats for an estimated $7.3 billion. The DOE initially estimates total cleanup at $37 billion. 2005, Kaiser Hill says cleanup is complete. 2006, the jury in Cook v. Walkwell International awards the plaintiffs $554 million. 2007, over 4,900 acres or 80% of the Rocky Flats site is transferred to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. 2008, the judge in Cook v. Rockwell International issues a final reward of $926 million. Dow denies any wrongdoing and appeals. 2010, the Tenth Circuit Court of Appeals in Denver overturns the decision and throws out the award. And this is what got me to take the time before I cook my kids dinner for all of you that may consider moving to this area of buying homes. 2012, the wildlife refuge is still closed to the public. Extensive home construction continues in the area. It was hidden from you before. It's hidden from you now. Whether you want to believe it or not, it's killing people as of today. And you'll see this, the picture of the author, the author near the site where the plant once stood, 
more than 1,000 acres can never be reopened for human use. So, those of you in Colorado, Rocky Flats, become aware, become active. Don't let this die in the dust. Here's a aerial shot of the Rocky Flats plant. And again, you can find this in Reader's Digest. This is not a promotion for Reader's Digest, although I'm glad that they made us aware of this. And this is from July and August of this year. Uh, please spread this information, especially to those people who may be purchasing homes. They're still building homes in an area that will kill their children. You'll be deformed. You'll be brain dead. Good Lord. Does it ever end?